We begin on a sad note because a second year student of Jobing Senior High School has been found dead in a suspected murder at Ejisu Jamase in the Ashanti region. The yes to be identified deceased had gone missing days earlier. Ohiming Teria is following up on the issue and joins us for details. Ohiming, what more do we know? Thank you, uh, Daniel. The 16-year-old uh, SHS2 uh, student has been identified as Linda Akansa, a student of Javi Senior High School who is reading a uh, home account. Uh, we are told, according to the family, uh, she left home on Friday at about 5 p.m. Uh, to charge uh, her mobile phone outside the house. And it was, that was the last time the family uh, set an eye on her. Uh, so she went uh, missing since the Friday, and this morning a man uh, who was working on an uncompleted building uh, is said to have found the almost decomposed body of the 16-year-old girl. He raised an alarm, and residents were, uh, uh, went in there to see the lifeless body of the 16-year-old student. Uh, as we speak, the police from Ejoso had already conveyed the body to the morgue uh, awaiting autopsy. I mean, was she found with any marks on her? Maybe she was attacked or something? Yes, there are reports from the community uh, residents who had the opportunity to look at the body. Uh, suspect a part uh, of the body may have been tempered with, but that is yet to be confirmed uh, by the police. Uh, this is the second time in two years uh, that a female uh, has been found in the same uh, situation uh, two years ago. A 19-year-old uh, 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 her dresser apprentice w w was said to have been murdered in the community. Her body was found in a similar uh, situation. Uh, so residents are raising uh, concerns about security in the area, especially in an area which has been underdeveloped. How about her family? Do they have any demands? The family, the, the mother, for instance, uh, uh, has been weeping all the, uh, just that she says, uh, there, there, there have been some speculations in the community that the, 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 the lady or the girl in question uh, could be uh, hiding somewhere with a man. But she says that no, uh, the, the, the girl was not brought up that way. So she suspects somebody uh, might have lured her uh, and murdered her in the process. Thank you very much, Ohiming Teria, for that update. Now, away from that, the power consumers will have to pay more for electricity starting July 1. The Public Utilities Regulatory Commission, the PURC, has announced an 11.17% increase in electricity tariffs. A statement released by the PURC a few hours ago explains this is to sustain the financial viability of utility service providers as well as ensure quality service to consumers. Let's get details of that statement now. In a statement signed by its executive secretary, Mami Dufio Ofori, the PURC says it has approved an 11.17% tariff increase for recovery of total electricity revenue requirement for the regulated electricity market. The Commission says it received and considered tariff proposals from stakeholders, including the VRA, Gridco, ECG, PDS and NETCO, in taking the decision. In line with the Commission's regulatory oversight mandate, extensive technical and financial analysis of the proposals were undertaken, according to the PURC. The key objective of the tariff review was to sustain the financial viability of utility service providers as well as ensuring delivery of quality service to consumers. It further states it has also eliminated the maximum demand charge on industrial customers and it is expected that the policy will result in some special load tariff customers experiencing savings in their overall electricity bills. This, it says, is aimed at enhancing the competitiveness of Ghanaian industries. The Commission adds that it has received a tariff proposal from the Ghana Water Company Limited, and the decision on this will be announced in due course. We now have um, Ben Bwachi, the Executive Director for the Africa Center for Energy Policy, on the line with us. Now, Mr. Bwachi, you had predicted a 10 to 15 percent increase, so surely this does not come as a surprise. 
Yes, I mean, that was because of the speculations that we were hearing from the negotiations that government was doing uh, with the uh, producers and also on gas uh, supply. So we put those numbers uh, into our model to see what the optimal adjustment uh, should be. So that is how come we were anticipating that level of adjustment. And also, we were anticipating that industry probably would get a lower adjustment, uh, for example, between 6 and 8%. Mm. And then the domestic consumers will probably pay uh, more at around 15%. That would have allowed, you know, business to have more relief to be able to uh, uh, recruit people and uh, expand their businesses, which impact uh, the economy uh, uh, greater than just uh, putting out a blanket uh, 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 adjustment for everybody. On that note, the minority has said that this tariff increment is still on the high side. Do you agree? Um, that is surprising. I, mean, I think they have to put out numbers uh, to show that uh, it's on a higher side. Um, the fact is that the industry hasn't been the same. Um, even if you take out uh, the fuel, which was renegotiated, and then the capacity charges, other elements adjust themselves automatically. The variable charges, the input costs, uh, uh, they all adjust themselves because we have other variables impacting on them. For example, if the exchange rate depreciates, you have to account for that in the tariff. Uh, for them to be able to recover that. Uh, there are some of the variables that also uh, have a percentage adjustment every year. So whether you review the tariff or not, they are not waiting for you. They adjust themselves. And I'm sure some of them know that those variables adjust themselves in the contracts that they themselves were party to, to, to sign in. So I don't know how those will be absorbed if the tariff is not adjust, adjusted. But we still have some variables in there that are under government's control, like the... Uh, for instance, the National Electrification Levy, which is a margin government itself places on the tariff? Of course. Those are all variables that add to uh, the tariff. But those are constant because, you see, those tariffs are, 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 are constant because they're in city terms. But there are variables that are dollarized, or if you want to put it that way. And then it, uh, some are also adjusted automatically because some of them, for example, in the contract will say that the uh, uh, variable charges attract a CPI uh, of 2% or 4%. So once the CPI adjusts, we know that you have to adjust every year. Whether you mm. adjust the tariff or not, mm. the producer would take that money from uh, the system. So either you want government to pay or you want the consumer of electricity to pay. That's a decision that you have to take. Thank you very much, Ben Boaji, for joining us. He's Executive yeah. Director for the Africa Center for Energy Policy. Now, of course, on the back of this, we must say that the Power Distribution Service, PDS, will therefore set up a reckoner so viewers and power consumers across the country can understand how much this will affect them in cities and pestwares. So we expect that in the next few days. Now, however, doctors say blood was drawn from the body of a seven-year-old boy whose lifeless body was found in an open drain on Monday at Kataman's so promised land in the Greater Accra region. The autopsy report on his body confirms his family's fears that he was killed and abandoned. The boy went missing on Sunday afternoon when he was asked by his mother to go get a haircut in the neighborhood. His body was later found in a drain far from his home. Commander of the Zainu Atadika District Police, DSV Abdullah Mumuni, gave us details of the autopsy report on news desk. We retrieved the body from the, the, the stream. Mm. We're expecting that when we press the tummy, mm. water at least should come out for us to so that uh, at least he drank some uh, amount of water before he died or passed on. But that was not the case. But then we took the body to the morgue and then the post mortem was performed. And the doctor sort of uh, detected some contusions on the body and then uh, he said this might have been as a result of a, maybe some uh, things that were pierced into the body. So he cut the body all right, and then uh, he realized that uh, something like another was used to perhaps draw or extract blood from the body through both uh, uh, shoulders and on the hand and uh, on the leg. But uh, it takes a critical person to observe those things from outside. No arrest has been made so far, but then we have uh, put some things in place to see how best we can uh, get close to whatever might have caused this uh, in your mm. life.
Still live on Joy News today with me, Daniel Daze. Coming up, uh, the John Evans at Mills Presidential Library in Cape Coast, which was a memorial and research facility, was completed and inaugurated three years ago. It's currently not in use. We'll tell you why when we come back. This is Joy News Today. Thanks for staying with us. In other stories, the, the John Evans at Mills Presidential Library in Cape Coast, a memorial and research facility, which was completed and inaugurated about three years ago, is rotting away. The development stems from the resolve of the contractor who executed the project to hold on to the keys for non-payment of work done. Residents of Cape Coast say this is an insult to the memory and legacy of the late president and one of the committee members who attacked to, uh, the facility to break their silence. Richard Kojonyako has more in this report. On July 24, 2016, former President John Dramani Mahama inaugurated the Atamos Presidential Library, which coincided with the fourth anniversary of the death of President Mills. On that day, he said the library should be the presidential library befitting the life of Professor Mills as a renowned academic sportsman, politician, president, and peace-loving Ghanaian. A peace-loving man, he prioritized peace above all else. Because as Prof always rightly stated, Without peace, there can be no progress. The facility has a 100-capacity auditorium, a 45-seater multimedia center, seminar rooms, and a museum that holds historical materials that reflect the life and works of the late president. The edifice also has a virtual sound room that echoes the voice of Professor Mills in his memorable speeches and images that bring to life his surgeon. So this is the John... Evans Atamos Presidential Library. It was commissioned about three years ago, but sadly, after its commissioning, nothing has taken place here. The facility has not been used. So as a result of the proximity of this multi-million dollar facility uh, to the sea, many of the parts are peeling off, others are falling off, and rusting and corrosion has become the order. The place is virtually on its knees because it's been locked up for the past three years. Let's take a look at what is happening here. The entrance to the facility has been tightly locked. It's been tightly locked by the contractor to prevent anybody from entering this facility. It's become a source of worry to many of the residents here. The Cape Cod Youth Development Association is extremely worried. They feel it is an insult to the memory and the legacy of the late president. They did this job for him to appreciate what he has done for Ghana, but the thing is destroying. Since the time they opened this library, it's artificial, handing over to Cape Coast and UCC. We are angry about the planning committee. If Professor Mus has served Ghana and all this planning committee uh, members Profit on his administration. And if Professor Temis is no more, and see what they have done to him. That's why Cape Coast Youth Development Association, we are worried because the uh, sea basin is destroying uh, this uh, presidential library and it's disgrace to uh, we Cape Coast. So the question many are asking is that. What is the committee that was put in place to put up this facility doing? What are they saying? What answers are they going to give to the general public about the reason why this facility is still not functioning or has been closed down? Now, what we have stumbled upon is a letter uh, with the University of Cape Coast that um, the former chief of staff, Julius Debra, wrote to the University of Cape Coast. They say that the, university, the responsibility of the university to run this facility, the title deeds are supposed to be worked on by the AESL and to be handed over to the University of Cape Coast. And then the contractor is expected to hand over the keys. But the contractor has issues with the certificate. He's not been paid the full amount, and so he's decided to pocket the keys. Now, 
Oh, yeah, but check my you go a man. It's a nana, my hen. This woman, I dread on call, bumped into us at the entrance of the presidential library. Her message is simple. Your mind of Ugwa traditional area and President Akufadu should stand up to be counted. She is of the belief that if for nothing at all, the late Prof. Samuel served the entire country and the legacy should be protected. Any minimum brown when you part, what's in his in what's here, and also a Nanakovado. Oh, but do not so name Bla, not so what's in his in by a BB, a Sagan, any minimum, and to my I am one young one, the man I was so good, I was one yamo, and so on so annoying on Boga and a man. From Cape Coast, Richard Quijenia, I could report. Still have enjoyed news today. Now, in other stories, the ministries and its environs are one of the hot spots with a huge population of commuters and hawkers. However, the plush area with high-rise buildings has been overtaken by weeds, creating an unhealthy site. These weeds have replaced what used to be beautiful lawns of grass at some principal streets of the capital. Selenam Ampo visited the area and reports. On a short trip from the Independence Avenue towards the refurbished Greater Accra Regional Hospital, one cannot help but notice the thick overgrown weeds spewing onto the road. The median of the street we should have flowered and the lawn doesn't. The shrub-like weeds in the median cannot go unnoticed by those who use that stretch. Ironically, the Accra Metropolitan Assembly, the Urban Roads Department among others, are located in the same area. As you can see, it's, 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 it's scary. I mean, during night especially, you understand. These are... I mean, once these things are not cleared, you have uh, um, animals, reptiles in them, you understand? It's bad. I mean, we just have to ensure these things are cleared, you understand? Maybe the AMA, the assembly, I don't know, but can get people to be going around, just as the way they have people going around clamping cars. If they can have a tax force or if they can have people that will also be going around clearing these things, it will help. Because um, the way the place is bushy, I feel like, it's just my opinion, but I feel like maybe there are some creatures living inside. Or if, I don't know, maybe some people can organize themselves to come and clear this place. That would be nice. It doesn't look nice if you are passing. If a stranger you have a visitor going around, around, it doesn't look nice for the country. With weeds also climbing out from the Afwa Sutherland Park onto the curb, the Municipal Coordinating Director of the Kole Klote Municipal Assembly, Bernard Ingora, attributed the overgrowth to the rains. Uh, the problem is when the rain sets in, the work becomes so much that after you, when you finish here, then you have to go back to wherever, and that is, so we do it in cycle. Over, because of the massive rains that we had, and when it is raining, the gang cannot go out to it. So for the space of, let's say, two days, there could be a lapse. He, however, promised that some men will be taxed to clear the area next week. That place, for instance, come Monday, you wouldn't find anything there. The median, because come Sunday, the person, as he's doing the children's park, the uh, National Theatre, he will come onto the median. For many, it is an eyesore, especially at a time the much-touted claim by President Akufado of making the capital the cleanest city in Africa still fresh in our minds. Selina Ampo's report for Joy News. Still live on Joy News today. Now, the Nursing and Midwifery Council has suspended a nurse and midwife on separate counts of unprofessional conduct and breach of professional standards for three years. The decisions against the two health practitioners was made after the Professional and Disciplinary Committee of the Governing Board issued preliminary inquiry reports. One of them, Sarah Sewa Major, who was operating with an invalid license, also owns the Cradle Care Maternity Home. Speaking earlier on News Desk, PRO for the NMC said they've written to HEFRA to take a decision on the facility. As far as the council is concerned, we have dealt with the practitioner mm. from which the complaint was made to the council. Mm. There is another agency that is a health facility regulatory agency under the Ministry of Health. Mm. They 
are the regulators of health facilities in the country. And we have written to them to also pick up the matter. But as, as it is, the complaint was made against the practitioner. We have sat on the case, made our recommendations, and the sanctions have been made. The issue about the facility, we have directed the health uh, health regulatory uh, facility agency to handle that aspect. As per the statement, after a suspension, he is supposed to undergo a continuous professional development program, upon which, after he's done with the program, we will assess her, decide if she can practice or she cannot. But within the suspension period, she is not supposed to hold herself as a registered midwife or to render any midwifery service to any person. Periodically, our officers visit health facilities to conduct supervision, and they do that in collaboration with the nurse managers the medical officers in charge of those facilities to ensure that the standards that we have set are being complied with and also to ensure that all nursing and military practitioners mm. are practicing with valid license. Mm. But time has not allowed us to visit every facility in this country. And that is why we are calling on the general public and the media to join us in this fight, should we come across any issue of unprofessional conduct on the part of our nurses and midwives? Another story is farmers in the Amansia South District of the Ashanti region will soon have over 15,000 hectares of land from Galamsey degraded fields for cultivation. The District Agricultural Directorate is spearheading a reclamation effort to restore livelihoods lost as a result of years of destruction by illegal miners. Ohimming Terrier has more in the following report. Amansia South is one of the areas of wide and pronounced devastation by illegal mining. Under a reclamation project being financed by the District Assembly, nitrogen fishing plants have been introduced to enrich reclaimed land. Vast areas of land have already been put under plantain and yam cultivation with signs of high yield. Authorities want more farmers, especially the youth, to take advantage of the initiative to restore Amansia South as major food basket in the country. John Swansea is the district director of agriculture. Show you to the far south belt or the farmers that a degraded land is not spoiled. You can still regain it. That is why we are putting the plantain. And it's not only the plantain that we are going to. We are going to put in cocoa, cassava, and most of the crops. So this place will also serve as a, a learning center for farmers. We bring farmers here to come and learn. Uh, farmers in Manchester South, she contacted the assembly and the agri department so that those lands that have been destroyed can be reclaimed and put back into our culture use. Meanwhile, the assembly is making available 13,000 oil palm seedlings and other farming equipment to farmers, especially the youth, under the Planting for Food and Export program. William Asantebe Diakon is chief executive. And these are places where Galamse have been done. And people thought that the, the, the land were totally out of use. But I can assure people that when they decide to put the soil back, very soon, the soil will revegetate itself, and we can we can actually use the soil for any, I mean, agriculture purposes that we, we want. From Kumasi, for Joy News, I'm Interior reporting. And it's day five of the National Science and Maths Quiz. And students and contestants of Georgie Pei Senior High School in the Volta region are confident that Achimota School's qualification to the 1-8 stage will be called in question today when the two schools square off at 1 p.m. It's just a few minutes to 1 p.m. And we'll be speaking to Maxwell Agbagba, who has joined us live. Maxwell, how's the atmosphere like? Just for giving this part of the program, 
You are watching at home and uh, behind you, you can see you all is set for the contest between Achimota School, Junto Penny, um, Senior High School and Konongo Dumasi um, School um, to commence. Uh, what you can see right there is announcement going on, preparations also going on. So in the next five minutes, we should have um, the contest, you know, um, starting here at the RS Amegashi Auditorium. A lot of the old students and present students who are inside here are all rooting for their schools, supporting their schools um, to victory. Already when we came in, we could hear the shouts, the cheering, and the singing of school, you know, um, anthems. Um, we expect that to go on until the final, you know, um, round. But if you look at this contest, Achimota School is coming in as two-time winners and then Greater Accra Regional Champions. The maiden edition of the Greater Accra Regional Championship was at Achimota School um, sometime, I think that's two months ago, and they won that particular um, competition. Now, in the regional qualifiers also, Achimota School scored a little over 40 points to qualify to the national stage. Georgia Penny uh, from the Volta region, on the other hand, qualified with a little over 30 um, points to make it to the national stage. Konongo Aldumase um, really had a little over 20 points to qualify um, for the uh, competition at this national um, level. So really, if you see, Achimata School is coming in as the favorite of this you know, contest. But you cannot also rule out the fact that in the 2018 competition, Konongo Odumase Senior High School, they scored one of the highest you know, points during the prelims. They had 62 points, but they were later um, eliminated um, as the competition progressed. At Shimota School, they were eliminated in 2018 by Tamale Senior High School, and they are seeking um, to win the competition for the third time. So really, the stakes are really high for this particular contest, and all of us in here are ready for it to begin. Game. Right, Marco, and we just had, I was very curious to hear what happened there, but uh, we want to know when exactly the competition will begin. Uh, it's going to start in the next five minutes, possibly. It should mm. the competition itself to to begin. But later, also at 4 p.m., we have another um, contest um, that's expected to be heated. Um, Ghana Secondary Technical School it's competing. One-time winners they would also be contesting, uh, competing at exactly 4 o'clock p.m. So in the next 10 minutes, roughly roughly 10 minutes, this contest should begin. Daniel, what are some of the other contests that are taking place today? Well, we've had um, SDA, SHS, Pequai, um, they've qualified to the 1 8 stage of the contest. Uh, we've had Sect Ignatius of Loyola also um, qualifying. That contest started at 10, ended around sometime around 12. Um, PM. So this is the second contest mm. that is happening. But you know that uh, you can watch this particular contest on our Facebook page. Uh, we are streaming live this contest. You can also stick to our social media handles. The hashtag is NSMQ on Joy for live updates of this contest and more to come. And Maxwell said it all. Thank you very much for joining us, Maxwell. You have our fingers crossed for the schools we are loyal to. It's, now, it's time for business, however, and in business, slow growth in the non-oil sector of the economy has been blamed on government's inability to allocate substantial funds for infrastructure projects. We hear from economist Professor Bokpin. So once you are spending less in that area, you are, you, are, you are not working hard to ease the restrictions on the growth drivers of that sector. More on that when Daryl joins us after this. Stay with us. Thank you.